Hello and welcome to Let Me Ball You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. It is one twenty seven AM on this Ooh, yeah, Wednesday morning. I'm not sure what day it is. What date, rather? It's the 21st. Yeah, 21st of August 2019. So... I've got, what, six days until my 49th birthday, which is on Monday. So, 49? Really? I think I might be going through a, I don't know, midlife... Not so much midlife crisis as a a midlife just contemplation really I think if anything else just contemplating the the situation my life and where I am now and where I was and where on earth am I going I don't know and it's been a weird day been a weird couple of days really it's been a weird I don't know I had a really really lovely day on Saturday visited family saw my aunt that I haven't seen since my nan's funeral I saw my little brother that I haven't seen probably for maybe a year and a half two years even and I didn't even see him on his 40th birthday which was last year last August so it may well be nearly two years since I saw him and So that was really nice. This week I've been... Just had a bit of a financial struggle. It's it's bugged me a little bit. (laughs) Just this bugged me. It's been bugging me. And... And Andre got fleas. Which isn't quite as awful as it sounds because they're kind of sticking to him they're not spreading I'm not getting bitten they're not gone onto the carpets or anything he's basically uh, they're just on him and he hasn't got many so yesterday I tried to get some well over the weekend I think Sunday I gave him, or Saturday, I gave him tablets, like a little tablet for the fleas, and that seemed to have done the trick, but then they came back, so it didn't do the trick, and then on Monday, I was trying to find, you know, I went to the pet shop, and they gave me some tablets that weren't the right ones. But they did say, you know, not tablets like liquid stuff, but spot spot check or spot something. But they said, do call the number on the box first before using it, which I did. They said, we'll call you back because we're not sure. They called me back. They said, we are sure now. Uh, don't use it because we haven't uh, ever tested it on ferrets. And so... 
the lady in the pet shop did say that I could take it back which and get the money back if it wasn't usable which was which is good and then yesterday I went into the pet shop and I went to the I was going to go into town to another pet shop that's but I spoke to the person on the phone first and they said yeah I've got this uh, got this liquid stuff but it's the best in the world and you can only get it here and like I don't know, I don't know. sounded a little bit just I wasn't sure I'd never heard of the name of it either um, but I headed up to get it and on the way I saw the the vets and I thought oh, I know what I'll do I'll go in there I'm sure they've got the, the flea stuff you know stuff to help him and the lady in there said no we haven't but we can get it for you tomorrow I said okay cool so I'll just come back tomorrow she said yeah but you have to have an appointment first because it can only be prescribed to a patient I said I'm not a ferret she said I know you're not a ferret I don't mean you I said oh, okay and uh, she said you need to have an appointment I said how much will that cost she said nothing it's free but the treatment will cost and I said how much is the treatment and she said she looked at the computer and she said it's ten pound ninety one or something like that I said fine I just spent twelve pound or thirteen pound on the other stuff so it's fine I'll get that money back and it'll cover the cost of the the treatment at the vets so I go back this morning or this afternoon rather struggled to get out of bed set my alarm for two o'clock and it was, oh, it was like going it was like just I had my phone in my room and I woke up about half twelve or one o'clock something like that and I thought, no, I'm just going to lay on the bed, and which is what I did. And every 10 minutes, I was waking up and looking at the phone. And eventually, I was woken up by the alarm. It's like, so it just got up when I woke up. But, and I was in bed by three, I'd say. I think so. And, So I got up, had a bath, had my breakfast, and I headed down with Andre. I took him in his bag, and I took him. I went to the pet shop where I bought the initial liquid thing for the fleas, but that didn't have any... Um, yeah I couldn't use it so I took it back and they gave me the money back which was groovy and then walked up and got the bus and it got to the bus stop just as the bus was pulling out so I managed to catch it and as I was getting on the bus the lady who was driving it was giving me some looks and I thought Oh no, she's not going to not let me on because of having Andre. But she wasn't, she was just interested. Because she said, Was oh, that a ferret? Which is weird, because you can't, well, there's a bit of material at the top that you can see through, but I'm surprised that people could, like, know what it was, but know what he is. And uh, she was, like, really, really friendly, so that was good. I got on the bus. So everything was kind of going to plan, I suppose. And I went into the... I also had a donate. I had a, a gift, a PayPal gift from my friend Susan in Canada. 
Canada? Yeah. Don't know why I keep thinking Australia, but it's Canada. And I went into so I up Yeah, so I did that to my account, but it takes a while for it to go through. And I went on the way on the bus to the vets. There was a couple, well, no, three people and a little kid, a little baby, and they were just giving Andre a lot of fuss. I did let him out of the bag, but I opened the bag up so he could stick his head out, and you know, he was just oh, he was sniffing, yeah, he was like proper because he's got a real. A strong sense of smell so he was taking in all the different smells of uh, I guess the bus and the people and everything he loves, seemed to be really enjoying himself but he was you know, struggling to get out of the bag and I kind of had to keep him in there and then I got off the bus and he was still struggling to get out of the bag because I was just going to carry him to the vet so I need to let him out and I'm kind of pulling him and I seem to be dragging him and look over he's just done the biggest poo and wee so basically he was, he was desperate to go to the toilet but it would never it would never go in his bag but you know I can't let him I can't just put him onto the floor in the in the bus and let him go to the toilet I mean that's I just can't do that so but I mean the thing is even the biggest poo for him is only tiny it's not like a dog or a cat poo it's just but anyway he did that and he was when he does that suddenly he has energy he sort of jumps around and he's like <laughs> it's weird it's like he celebrates and I'm glad that's out of me and this and then we walked to the pet shop the, the the vets and I thought well, I better stick him in the in the bag now so I put him in the bag I go into the vets and I go up to the lady that I saw yesterday and I said how much does it cost to how much would it cost me to put this thing down she said, what? I said, yeah, it's ruined my carpet. And she looked at me. I was horrified and I said, I've got an appointment. I saw you yesterday. And I said, oh, okay. I, I can't afford that she'd remember me. It was like just a, a silly, <laughs> silly joke. But she took it seriously, I think. I think it ruined our relationship. But uh, she said, oh yeah, the the thing is, I thought she'd remember me because I was talking to her for about 15 minutes about medication, how much it was going to cost, and she had to order it and take my details and all that stuff, so I, I don't know. Um, but she didn't remember me. And she said, oh, because I got in there early, probably about 20 minutes earlier than I needed to. And she said, well, the, the, the vet's here. Well, I kind of expected him to be there. I mean, I didn't think he'd just come in for that one appointment. And after about three or four minutes... A young bloke came out and he said, Andre? I, I, I love that. I love that. The fact that, because Andre's the patient, and it should be him, shouldn't it? His name should be called out. And uh, so I brought, I, I took him into the, he led me into the room where there's a, like a table, you know, standard 
benchy table chair thing whatever it is it's like it's kind of like a, a kind of like a massage table really but that kind of yeah I don't know but anyway I got him out of the bag I took his collar off the lead off of him and I put him down and he started sniffing around and and just having a good look and like moving around a lot and he he got a hor- not a horoscope not a telescope Cephas Tephas Telus Tephoscope Hephoscope Mephis you know that thing you, that you use to well not you unless you're a doctor or a nurse you used to hear the heartbeat stethoscope yeah stethoscope and he had one of those but it was like a little one and I, it was a lot little he had, he had a very little one I thought it, it is I thought it'd be bigger but I guess if it's a small animal they have a use a small one I mean I suppose it's, it's the same as if it was a if it was a lion you wouldn't use a tiny one you'd probably use a much bigger one than you would for a human I don't know I mean I'm not I'm not an expert on stethoscopes but every time he went to sort of put it on to Andre Andre's wiggling about and moving about and getting away so I basically said I'll, I'll hold him for you so I hold him on his back or in my arms but I hold him so that the um, the vet could listen to his heart and check that and then he checked his stomach felt around his stomach to make sure he was fine and then he checked his coat and had a look and he said yeah I could see the fleas but there's not many um, so he's he hasn't got a lot there and he had the medication and I said is, is it alright if you stick it on for me because I'm just lazy I don't if I can avoid doing anything I will seriously I'll I'll go 10 miles out of my way if a shop has like automatic doors <laughs> it's, it's terrible isn't it but um he did that put the liquid on has to go between Andre's shoulder blades because he can't get to that he can't lick his shoulder blades and Andre was so good really he was just just so good he just just took it he didn't like it because he doesn't like having stuff like that done but I was holding him and he behaved himself he didn't buy it or anything because sometimes if you do something to him he doesn't like he might bite not hard but just like a warning really or he'll scratch usually just to get away he does that when I bathe him um, but he didn't do any of that stuff with the vet probably because I was holding him and he felt safe because even though a lot of the time he, he acts like he doesn't care whether I'm there or not if someone else comes along he clings to me that's weird isn't it he'll actually cling to me so if I'm talking to somebody at the front door or outside he will cling to me literally and he'll, he'll wiggle about sometimes he'll just lay there or just you know be still or quiet maybe go to sleep even but he clings to me doesn't do that generally any other situation so it's not that he's scared I think he just is a bit I don't know maybe just a bit of a baby maybe I don't know but I do quite like it so hey 
So everything was going really well. Andre had his little medication and the um, the vet said, oh, here's the... And I think he's, he took the box and he took it out. He said, go around, I'll meet you at the reception. Which I did. And uh, so I was getting ready to pay. I said to the doctor, the vet, do I need any other, you know, appointments or anything? And he said, well, give the medication once a month. And then in a year's time, come back and have another uh, fleet check. And if he has any lumps in his stomach, come and see us as well, because that's something that uh, ferrets can sometimes have, um, which should be treated by the the medication that he's got. And I'm always like feeling him, touching him and massaging him and just touching his stomach uh, just to make sure that he's okay, make sure he doesn't flinch or that he's not in pain or anything like that. So he's, I'm always kind of keeping check of him. That's that's how I notice the fleas because he doesn't have fleas normally. And I'm constantly checking his coat, going through it. You know, I brush his coat quite regularly. So I always, and he's at the moment, especially with the summer, his coat's very fair. In the winter, it gets a lot darker, but at the you know at the moment it's quite fair. So you, it's quite easy to see little black things crawling, crawling about, crawling about. And then, so I said, okay, so I couldn't remember if it was ten pound ninety one or ten pound ninety nine. I forget. And uh, so I'm kind of gonna get 10 pound I think I have I wasn't sure how much I had on me but I knew I had at least 13 pound and I said how much is it and the lady said oh it's 28 pound 30 I said what she said yeah 28 pound 30 I said yesterday you said it was gonna be 10 pound something She said it's twenty-eight pound thirty, something like it. Might not have been. It might be twenty-eight pound eighty. I don't know. It was, it was over twenty-eight pound. I thought, like, oh, what? What? It was confusing me. Plus, there were some people waiting to be seen as well. So I kind of had that little bit of added pressure. I had to publicly converse about quite small amounts of money really but it's still annoying and she said yeah it's 28 pound and I said well you said it was 10 pound yesterday she said oh don't you want all three tablets I said what she said no it's 10 pound 80 whatever per tablet or per capsule of liquid that you put on it's not £10 for the box of three it's £28 for the box of three and I said oh. I said well I suppose I just have to take one then and she handed me one I said no it's alright the, the, um, the vet's already given me one of the capsules what do you put it on him so I was honest and you know what I mean I didn't sort of try and sort of take advantage of the situation I thought you know it's already been paid I've already done I've already taken what's you know I'm paying for and she's and I said can you can you hold the other th the other two capsules in the box for me and I'll come and get them when I get my next bit of money and she said no not can't do that so I felt a little bit silly a little bit um, 
Admittedly, I did have a, I was balancing a jar of jam on my head, so that probably didn't help. But I just, I kind of said, I, I don't know if, I, you know, the idea of having to go through the whole process again and, you know, ordering and waiting for it to turn up and stuff. I said, let's see if I've got enough to pay for it. The money hadn't gone through into the account yet, so I couldn't use that. But I did just have enough cash. So I had £28. I had £29 altogether, and I gave that. And I got like a little bit of change. It's like, oh, great. Yay. And then I went to, I did that. I went and waited at the bus stop. So I'm just holding in. Because uh, I don't really want to let him on the on the street. I let him down a little bit, but there's a lot of traffic uh, going past. So I'm just waiting with him, holding him up, letting him go into his bag every now and then. And uh, a young lady stops. And she's got her kids with her, and she's like saying hello to him and how beautiful he is, and how she wanted to take him home with her. And uh, and then the bus came. I got on the bus. It was the same lady as the bus that I got onto before. So she'd literally gone to town and turned round and come back. And she said to me, "Oh." That was quick. And I thought, well, at least someone remembers me. And I get on. And I get off again opposite the garage. Go to the garage. I get what I needed to get from the garage. And I had... It came to... I can't forget what it was. What did it come to? Something like sixteen pound twenty. And I said, "Wait a sec," because I didn't know how much I had in the bank. So I had to check if it's gone through. <laughs> it should have done. And I had sixteen pound twenty-four in the bank. So I paid on my card what I was getting from the garage. And I started laughing. And I said, you realise? Because I'm I getting quite well with the, with the lady that works there. I said, it's taken me 49 years to save up four pence. I've saved up four pence in 49 years. And she said, have a good day. So I was like, I left. And it was kind of a surreal moment. And the last time, really, I felt that was 2011, 2012, 2013. 2012, I don't know, one of those where I owed rent so I was behind on my rent and I didn't really have any money at all and I had, I think, 12 pence in the bank and I just was walking down the street laughing but the difference is then I had no money for food, I had no money for anything this is different because I've got everything I need you know, technically so and I've got a home so it's a different situation but it's still I still find it quite amusing to be, you know, getting on to fifty and having four pence in the bank. So it's been a strange financial week. And I've just got I've just got my uh, fortnightly money today. So I had to pay back £50 that I borrowed at the weekend that enabled me to travel to 
see my family. I had to pay off fifty pounds to the catalogue and then another thirty pound to for the electric gas bill that I just got a reminder for. And I never get reminders. I always pay them. The whole time I've lived here, I've always paid them straight away. And I got my first I don't know if that would be a red warning or what. It's like, wow. It was only for a small amount. But uh, that's now done. Very strange. Just just a bit strange. Times. Started thinking, what am I going to do? What should I do now? I don't know. I don't know what to do. I do do. So that was today. Since I got home, Andre has been asleep. I mean, solidly asleep. And we must have been home since five. Pretty much for the whole, the last eight hours, or nearly nine hours, he's been asleep. So maybe that that uh, medication that he had from the vets, it kind of causes sleepiness, I don't know. But he was happy. I took a picture of him earlier and he was on his back smiling fast asleep I put to a picture and stuck it on Facebook so he's a happy little boy so yeah good for him I suppose getting out was nice as well because he got to go somewhere new because I rarely take him out anywhere other than just the local park or around the block so to take him on the bus, to take him uh, to the vets, to walk down that road that he rarely gets to walk down, and to meet new people on the bus and also at the bus stop, that was probably just a really nice experience for him, to just do something a, a little bit different, you know. So maybe he wore himself out. Maybe he got very excited and and now he's dreaming about it. He's got something to dream about, something new, something stimulating perhaps. So yeah, that was uh I'm really surprised he hasn't sort of come into the living room yet because he's just this is the third recording I've made not in a row but as in I made two at the end of the evening and the last one finished about half hour ago or maybe half an hour before I started this one So I did uh, Deep Sleep Whisper, number 131. I did Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks, number 47. And this is number 201 of the Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcast. So... I'm kind of feeling quite tired. Quite tired. <sighs> More than a bit. I did have a little bit of a sleep earlier. For about an hour. I had a little lay down. About half seven. 
quarter to, quarter to eight, something like that, till about nine. Just a little sleep, just a little, mm, you know, a little. Ah, it's quite nice. And then tomorrow, I'm dealing with the double glazing people. And they're measuring my door. And uh, probably going to get a new front door, which is good. Thursday, I've got an appointment. Friday... Um... No, I've got nothing planned Friday. Saturday, Sunday. It's the bank holiday weekend. And Monday, also part of the bank holiday weekend, so the bank holiday Monday, is my 49th birthday. So I'm not sure what... Yeah, I'm probably not going to do anything just the thing is on a bank holiday the bus service is pretty awful which is fair enough it's just you know it's not that often but it's it's a it's a sunday service so the buses are every two hours now if a bus doesn't turn up every when it's every half hour it's not so bad but if they're every two hours and they don't turn up or if they turn up early too early or too you know it's a little bit um, it's never yeah I basically don't travel on a Sunday because I waited once for an hour for a bus I was there half an hour before it was supposed to be there and I was there half an hour after it was supposed to be there and I vowed never never to get a bus on a Sunday again I thought no and I think it was raining but it might be nice and what made it more so let's just use the word interesting when I got there, there were some people there already. And they were waiting with me for about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And then a car turns up and they get into the car. So they weren't waiting for the bus. They were just waiting to get picked up by someone in the car. And there's me thinking, not that I had company on the bus, I didn't need that. But just that I was kind of waiting for something that I was going to be turning up. Because others also were participating in, in that particular activity of waiting for said bus. But no, the bussy bus was not coming. No, not at all. No bus, no bus at all. So I went home and I thought, no, I was growling. I was going, so during the week, so when I first moved here, the buses were every 20 minutes, which I think is a pretty good service. And Saturdays was every half an hour. And Sundays every three weeks, every, t every two hours apparently. And then, 
they changed the timetable so that the weekly buses were every half an hour like the Saturday one which means if a bus comes early you know maybe a little bit too early it'll go past and might have to wait for half an hour for the next one when it was 20 minutes just didn't seem as long as half an hour which is probably because it wasn't yeah that makes sense doesn't it yeah yeah makes absolute sense I've got the heating on it was chilly in here so I thought I'd put the heating on and I did and now it's a little bit too warm so I might have to go and turn the heating off or maybe open a window because I like having the window open all year round even if they're not wide open they'll be on the hinges so they're you know you can't open them from outside because they're kind of locked they're locked but they're locked in an open position so that the air can get in and out causing a I guess a, a fresher breathing environment for myself and possibly for Andre and maybe any subsequent visitors that may visit my home at some point and I, I do like the just having a bit of air flowing around the place I do and I've I've been doing that since I moved in you know, I've been getting up and opening the windows and letting in the fresh air and letting out the stale air and just letting the air flow and it's nice however when it's a bit chilly it can get a bit cold so it's not always a perfect environment temperature wise which sometimes requires the central heating being activated for a while but not forever for enough time for the temperature of this place I call home to reach a comfortable comfortable temperature comfortable level a comfortable level of comfort physically which then probably improves my emotional comfort which can be affected somewhat by 
temperature of the room if it's a little bit a little bit too cold or a little bit too warm so that's why I like to keep it at a, a pleasant level of temperature so that I can relax and just be able to let go and if I wish to drift off then I can and it feels really nice feels nice and comfortable and I've been thinking about the future so 49 in a few days time I like how that rhymed and I'm not sure about the year ahead as I've already said I'll probably continue eating bread and I don't know I think I'll just continue making recordings because this year 2019 or this year between my last birthday at the end of August last year when I turned 48 and this coming Monday when I turned 49 has I reckon been my most prolific year recording wise I must have made August, September, October, November, December I must have made about 450 maybe 500 recordings but I'd say probably about at least 400 recordings during that time it's a guess it's very much a guess but that's what I would say I reckon about 400 recordings in the last year I think I've done about 270 just this year alone 200 in 2019 I think and next year I'm planning to make at least a thousand recordings during 2020 that's what I foresee that was what I was aiming for this year but it's still been yeah 2019 has still been uh, the year where I've made the most recordings I think since I started doing this in 2006 so I would say that that 
that was the busiest year. 2019 will be even busier than... Yeah, 2020 will be even busier than 2019. 2018 was busy as well. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd like to do some courses. Do something a bit different. But I don't know what. Maybe sort of driving lessons. Not driving lessons, but driving, uh, you know, hypnosis -y course of driving. Um, I mean, I suppose realistically, the uh, list is pretty much endless of all the things I could do, of all the different issues I could make a recording about. So there's. Definitely a lot of uh, opportunities there to hopefully make a difference in some people's lives. And I suppose I didn't, I did know this, but I wasn't, I guess, as knowledgeable about myself as I am now in the past I I don't think I realised that I like to do things uh, let's say as a subject let's say sleep for example I like to do lots and lots of different recordings based on the same subject. The relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks podcast. So I've done 47 different episodes, 47 different recordings, but all aimed at the same purpose pretty much and I've probably got another 500 to go maybe another 1000 maybe another 5000 of those recordings to do and there's something about repetition being one of the best ways to change, to learn, to you know, to get out of old habits, to learn new, new habits, to change old ways of thinking, to create new ways and embed those new ways into your life. Repetition is one of the great ways to do that. Andre's just woken up. He's wide awake. So what I like to do is, there's a the repetition, but there's also different types of repetition. So you can listen to 10 different recordings all on the same subject but it's still repetition yet presented maybe from a different angle maybe focusing on a specific thing that the other recordings didn't focus on as much yet there's still that repetition and 
and that repetition spreads throughout I guess all of my recordings in a way you know the repetition of feeling relaxed letting go being kind to yourself speaking gently to yourself those ideas and thoughts are embedded in everything that I do I would say so that is repetition even if each recording is very different in some ways there's also that similarity even if it's just you know because it's the same voice so relaxed when I make these recordings I'm actually really tired So calm, just to let go. to do or say anything at all Listening to the background, a train in the distance going past. It's miles away. I just hear it on a clear evening like this. Even that feels relaxing. So relaxing. I don't even feel like I, I 
could open my eyes I almost feel stuck closed Say goodbye for now. And I will speak to you very soon. Be kind and gentle to yourself. Lots of love.